Hi, this is Ruth Teresa with One Inspiring Woman, and today I've got a ghost story for you. Hi, my name is Ruth Teresa with One Inspiring Woman. I'm an intuitive psychic medium here in the Sugarland area. That's just outside of Houston. Since I was a child, I've interacted with ghosts. I see them, hear them, and I even feel their energy everywhere I go. I love mostly hearing about their life. I usually have ghosts just show up at my home. I will post their ghost stories in my video series called Ghost Stories, as many as I possibly can. If you like my content, please make sure to subscribe, like, share, and even hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video. That's right. Today I have a new ghost in the house. He's been with me for, I want to say, seven or eight days now. He is very heavy set. Um, he looks younger than I think he is because the way he talks seems like he would be a little bit older, a little more mature. But I think that's the interesting part is, um, and when I mean big, I mean he's probably a good 400 pounds thereabout. Um, and he shows me the age of like 27, but his face looks very young, very, um, you know, not really having full whiskers in, um, very round face, of course, because he's heavy set, he's got a, you know, a, a round face, but this is really heavy set. Um, I can see like the folds of skin around his neck area. Um, he hasn't really shown me the rest of his body of like how big he is. It's always from a distance. He's always got a distance from me. He's always eight or 10 or 15 feet. And he's only kind of showing me from like the sh top of the shoulders up. He never really shows me the rest of his body. Um, he'll show me images that he saw when he was alive, like um, him in a, in a full length mirror, that sort of thing. And just having like many, many rolls of fat. Um, and he tells, he tells me that he felt disgusting. Um, like he wasn't worthy. I get the name like Bobby, but I also get the name Mike. So I don't know if like some people call him Bobby and some people call him Mike, but there's like a, two names that he goes by. And then kind of the last name sounds like Robertson or Roberson, something similar to that. Um, and I get um, the state of Alabama, although somehow I came across one of his family members somewhere, either someone he's related to, someone he's connected to, um, in the last, like I said, 10 days or so, I've come across somebody in his family. Um, <clears throat> he is um, very sweet, like I said, very funny, very sensitive, and really kind of um, like this inner sadness with him. And I almost feel like he's trying to play like he's happy. He's trying to tell other people he's happy, but he's really just not happy. Um, and he um, is constantly eating and he just eats so much food. And if people don't feed him, then he just gets like mad and angry and upset. Yet at the same time, it's like, he's so angry. He's so sad. He's so everything that it's just kind of like, it, he takes it out on like his family members. I would, it looks like maybe a mom or a stepmom that he's around a lot. Um, he just has this great inner sadness about him. And I think that's one of the things that kind of connects me to him is this inner sadness at times. And I do feel like he was molested as a small child. Um, I do feel like he at some point tried to tell somebody what was going on and it was kind of pushed off to the side, like we're not gonna listen to that or oh no, that didn't really happen. And I feel like it's a grandfather. Um, and I kind of feel like it's a grandfather on his dad's side of the family, but it's a um, very interesting energy of like, he tried to say something and it was kind of denied. And then he keeps trying to say something to people and they're really not listening. They're really not hearing him. And as he got older, he realized that this grandfather and molested many other people in the family and mainly the boys. And there were a lot of boys in the family. Um, he's like one of three boys. So I don't know if it's, he's like the third one or if there's three others and then him. Um, 
but there's many boys and then he has an aunt who has like a couple of boys and um some co other cousins that are you know male that are around this grandfather and this grandfather would drink and um would you know what I'm saying like touch and the boys and it's one of those not that he may have done it try to do it to the girls but there wasn't as many of them but this is something that I'm just going to call him Robbie wasn't able to get over wasn't able to get past um and I think it's because he tried to tell somebody and he tried to communicate that with different people to say hey this is going on hey I want you to know what I'm going through and he was kind of denied or put, you know, shut down like, no, 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 that's not true. That's not really happening. That's not. And um, so the people that he tried to tell were not taking care of him or not really listening to him as a child. And I feel like this happened at a very young um, age, probably um, three to four years of age. This happened. And I feel like he was around, around the grandfather a lot during that time frame. I also feel like there was an illness in the family and it could be his father um was sick and I almost get the word cancer being told to me not just feeling it I, I get told the word cancer and so um his dad was going through a lot and he didn't tell his dad but he told one of the other females in the family what was going on or how he felt about things and so that's where he just kind of gets stuck and he just couldn't get past this he just it was too much for him and I just felt like he um, continually felt like he was a victim, that he was not being listened to or heard. And so to kind of take care of those feelings, he just kept eating and eating and eating to try to, to calm that, um, because it was very overwhelming for him. It was very devastating for him. Um, I do feel like, um, there are some issues in the throat area when he passed. Um, and, um, you know, say not being able to catch his breath or not being able to breathe very well, but then also being so heavy, there's a lot of things medically that they couldn't do to help, um, uh, help him. And I get the year 19. So I, get, I think it's 2019 that he passed. Um, so he hasn't been gone all that long. Um, so if you're connected to Robbie's family, I would love to have you verify this with him, um, or with me. It's one of those, like, he is such a sweet energy and all he ever wanted in his life was to be heard. And I do feel like he really wanted to be active. He was like an active child um, prior to the incident happening. So he was like very active. He ran around a lot, played a lot. And then when that happened um, between three and five, four years of age, um, it kind of just slowed him down. And, and it was going into <clears throat> eating more and more and more to kind of cover that up, kind of get rid of all of that not feeling worthy and kind of hold down those feelings of just and then I also feel too that part of him is like I feel devastated over this with his energy but a true inner sadness a true inner sadness for him and he's such a sweet he is such a sweet funny child um and I do feel like he also had abilities he has um, kind of like this intuition, um, and I don't think he always listened to it as well as he could have or should have, but that was something that he, we were talking about not too long ago. Um, I think I have a picture of him, so um, if I do, I will put that on. Um, he is just such a sweet energy, so if you are related to um, Robbie, um, I will... Um, um, post this out. Hopefully we'll get to hear from his family and hopefully get to hear the other side of the story. This will be a great one for all of us to kind of hear the story on. I thank you so much for joining me today and I know that we'll be talking again soon.